I'd like to begin by asking if you recall the moment you were first approached to participate in television. It happened while I was working at the Large Hadron Collider as a postdoc at CERN. At the time, there was significant interest in the LHC and CERN due to the Higgs particle. Various interviews were conducted, film crews visited, and Radio 4 featured a season on the subject. Somehow, they appreciated the way I explained physics, and it was a serendipitous turn of events. Join us Cosmic Journey Brian Cox in Conversation BFI and Radio Times Television. Moving on, the first television program I worked on was for BBC4, focusing on the LHC. Unfortunately, I can't recall the title. Over the years, my career in science documentaries has evolved, and the industry has witnessed significant changes. The first clip from 2008, taken from a Horizon episode titled What on Earth is Wrong with Gravity? reflects on Sir Isaac Newton's contributions to our understanding of gravity. Looking back at it, I noticed changes in my presentation style, including accents and the off-camera approach, which was characteristic of the time. Reflecting on my childhood, the 70s, with science personalities like James Burke, Raymond Baxter, and Carl Sagan, had a profound impact on my interest in science. Sagan's A Cosmos especially resonated with me as it connected science with broader cultural aspects. The discussion then delves into the intersection of science and politics, drawing parallels with historical figures like Oppenheimer and Feynman. Shifting to my early career at CERN, I was a particle physicist overseeing an upgrade project. However, I became involved in advocating against science funding cuts. Notably, I deviated from physics to pursue a musical career, joining a band associated with Thin Lizzy. The conversation touches on the unique trajectory of individuals like Brian May and me who juggled science and other passions. The dialogue then moves to a clip about time and its relevance in the current era of celebrating geek culture. Doctor Who is discussed, emphasizing the importance of science fiction and sparking interest in science. I share my involvement in the filmed Sunshine and express a flexible view on the accuracy of science fiction, acknowledging its role in stimulating scientific curiosity. Regarding the development of my programs, the initial Horizon A experience involved collaboration with directors and camera crews, serving as a training ground. Ideas often originated from my scientific interests such as gravity and black holes. The conversation then transitions into my current research on black holes, quantum entanglement, and the holographic principle, emphasizing the evolving nature of scientific theories. The discussion acknowledges that these scientific theories are not yet proven but highlights the fascinating interplay between research on black holes and advancements in quantum computing. The dialogue ends with a recognition that physics is an ever-evolving field, and the journey into understanding the universe is ongoing. Absolutely, but when it comes to this specific area of research, is there a moment when you realize there's something substantial to submit? Certainly, with a PhD student, the culmination is the completion of their thesis, marking the point where they attain the title of a doctor. In terms of keeping up with diverse developments in modern research and science for your programs, how challenging is that? Given the constant evolution of new ideas, it must be a demanding task. Indeed, it's a formidable task. In the last series, Universe, we attempted to incorporate the latest research, including a dedicated episode on black holes. However, delving into recent studies, particularly those from the past few years starting with Stephen's papers, proved challenging due to their abstract nature. During my current tour, if I seem less than articulate, it's because I recently spoke in Salt Lake City. Explaining newly conducted research is tricky, physicists often resort to phrases like, in some sense, indicating a level of uncertainty and complexity that makes it hard to convey the reality suggested by this research. Black holes, in particular, present an additional challenge as there's minimal visual content, making it difficult to point a camera at anything concrete. Carl Sagan demonstrated a creative approach by using a cloth and a ball to illustrate concepts, a technique that traces back to Wheeler and the essence of general relativity, matter influences spacetime, and spacetime dictates how matter moves. Moving on to our third clip from Brian Cox's Adventures in Time and Space, aired in 2021 under the title Aliens, Are We Alone? In this segment, you draw a compelling comparison between the extreme conditions on other planets and the depths of our oceans. The clip showcases your exploration of life around hydrothermal vents, emphasizing the alien nature of these environments. In that particular segment, filmed for Wonders of the Solar System in 2009 and later used in The Adventures in Space and Time, I took on various roles due to the limited space in the exploration vehicle. It was just me in the back, handling filming, sound, and directing. The experience was unique and rewarding. 
Regarding your on-camera approach, your ability to make it personal stands out. How much of it is ad-libbed, reacting to what you encounter versus following a scripted idea? When filming sequences like the deep sea exploration, we had a general idea that it would be part of a larger film about life. However, the script was minimal. The 10-hour descent in the submersible provided ample time for spontaneous reactions and observations. You can't script the emotions you feel when descending over a mile into the ocean to witness a hydrothermal vent system. It's an experience that defies description in an office in London. The script serves as a background, but the understanding is that it will evolve significantly during filming. The collaborative process with the director, camera crew, and the immersive nature of being on location leads to new insights and changes in the script. In Universe, for instance, the series faced challenges due to the pandemic, influencing location choices. A program about stars, initially a cliched subject, underwent changes during filming as we sought an original and interesting philosophical thread. The director, primarily an arts director, played a pivotal role in reshaping the narrative. So we initiated a conversation, possibly in a bar, when we commenced filming. We delved into the intriguing godlike nature of these entities, as they serve as the creators of everything except for the hydrogen and helium in our bodies. Stars, the architects of the universe, also function as celestial furnaces, providing the necessary temperature variations for the emergence of complexity through thermodynamics. What adds to their fascination is their mortality, as they eventually perish. This sparked our interest in the concept of mortal gods, introducing a mythological element to our discussions. As filming progressed, this theme infiltrated the film. Your career has consistently engaged with profound philosophical questions, fearlessly navigating the realms of spirituality and faith. Unlike some scientists who firmly embrace atheism, your stance appears more nuanced. Science, exploring mysteries, acknowledges the vast unknown. Your willingness to delve into these areas, despite the prevailing fear of discussing faith, sets you apart. Reflecting on Feynman's exploration of science, defined as a satisfactory philosophy of ignorance, doubt emerges as a crucial lesson. Doubt, rather than being feared, should be embraced and openly discussed, a principle extending to democracy, symbolized by the ever-shifting pendulum of political ideologies. Returning to Feynman's insights, the core lesson is recognizing the significance of doubt. As we ponder the universe's origins and the mysteries within black holes, humility should accompany our acknowledgement of not knowing everything. Expressing uncertainty doesn't warrant unfounded speculations, as illustrated by the example of unidentified flying objects. Your upcoming TV airing, is Seven Days on Mars, filmed at the Jet Propulsion Lab, explores the Perseverance rover's mission and the potential implications of its findings. Your ability to communicate complex ideas extends to your live shows, where you skillfully interweave equations and scientific details with the broader meanings of discoveries. The fusion of music, like Mahler and Sibelius, adds depth to the exploration of life's meaning in an infinite universe. The success of your arena tours attests to the universal appeal of questions surrounding the universe's origin, reality's nature, and humanity's place within it. The conversation then shifts to the societal challenges posed by the current age, drawing parallels to Carl Sagan's The Demon Haunted World. The rise of science skepticism, fueled by social media and exacerbated during the COVID-19 pandemic, prompts reflection on the trajectory of science's role in the public sphere. The potential influence of political and societal pressures on documentary content is considered, with a focus on navigating sensitive topics like Brexit and government-related campaigns. As the discussion turns towards space exploration, the recent advancements by private sector entities like SpaceX are acknowledged. The importance of effective regulation to prevent monopolies and maintain accessibility to space is highlighted. The conversation delves into the challenges and opportunities presented by mining asteroids, reflecting on legal frameworks and the ethical considerations of space exploration. The dialogue concludes with optimism for the future, emphasizing the need for global collaboration to address pressing issues like climate change. The fragility of Earth and the unique value of human civilization underscore the importance of unity. While acknowledging the challenges, there is a sense of hope for positive shifts in public awareness and political will, guided by the understanding of our shared responsibility for the well-being of our planet and its inhabitants. Thanks for joining us on this cosmic journey. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and click the video on your screen for more mind-bending content. Until next time, keep gazing at the stars. This is Cosmic Inquiries signing off.